Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. We're recording this tropical update on Tuesday, July 2nd, and the National Hurricane Center just put out their new update just a few minutes ago. And the, I guess, biggest change, Jeff, from this morning's recording is the Yucatan Peninsula now has a hurricane watch on the eastern coast, which was expected. We still have hurricane warnings in effect for Jamaica and for the Cayman Islands. Um, Beryl is expected to make landfall in Jamaica tomorrow. There it is, 2 p.m. Wednesday. And I think that's whether it makes a direct hit on Jamaica or not, Jeff, it's going to make a difference in the intensity. Uh, Jamaica's got a few high mountainous areas up to 7,000 feet from what I understand. And, um, you know, that kind of have an effect on, on uh, how, a, you know, a hurricane structure and so forth. And then after it crosses to Jamaica, it enters some uh, wind shear in, in the Gulf. So that is in the forecast intensity. It's expected to be a category one when it makes landfall in um, on the Yucatan Peninsula early Friday morning. And then it'll cross over to Yucatan and enter the Gulf of Mexico sometime Saturday as a tropical storm. And some of the intensity forecasts now have it as a strong tropical storm. Of course, a lot of that depends on if it takes that more right track, it'd be a stronger storm. If it takes a left track, it'd be a weaker storm. There's more water to cross. If it takes that northern track, less if it takes the uh, the southern track. So that will be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but other than that, the storm is is pretty much the same. It has weakened just a little bit. It's still a Category 4, but those winds have dropped down now to 150 miles per hour. So folks in Jamaica, they are uh, they are in for a long day tomorrow, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. So this, this is almost certainly to be a major hurricane impact on the island of Jamaica um, and some adverse conditions for the Caymans. Um, maybe looking, you know, slightly better for the Yucatan. You're still going to get a hurricane, but nothing compared to what's coming um, for Jamaica here in the next 24 hours or so. And uh, this is the infrared satellite. You can, you know, just from what we saw yesterday to what we see today, you can see the degradation of the, the cloud pattern and the circulation. The eye is not as well formed here. Uh, the aircraft just got in there. We, just, we do have a I believe it's no aircraft that just got in there. <clears throat> they found the pressure down around 930, 934 millibars. So it's still a fairly mm. formidable hurricane. Yeah. Um, the other thing that is happening is is north of this. So we have the, the NOAA plane doing its low-level investigation of the hurricane. But up here to the north of Hispaniola and the Bahamas around Cuba, we do have a uh, an aircraft doing what we call a high-altitude mission right now. And so what that is, it's collecting... Uh, data and dropping sons through a deeper part of the atmosphere to sample the steering flow and that high pressure ridge up here to the north um, of uh, Barrel right now. So that is all going into the modeling. Hopefully we get most of that into the uh, zero Z models tonight. If not, uh, most of it will get into the 06 and the 12 Z for tomorrow. So this may help, this upper air sampling that's going on right now may help with tightening up some of that uncertainty further down the road here uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. But uh, fairly impressive still, of course, for July 2nd, uh, moving through the, the Caribbean here. With um, The other thing to notice is that this western side continues to erode. You see a lot more expansion of the, the, the squalls and the feeder bands and thunderstorms on the northeast side. And that is that westerly and southwesterly wind shear now starting to impart on the west side of the system. So it's starting to have an effect on this and it continues to be seen how quickly is barrel going to weaken as it comes over here into the Western Caribbean. Yeah, had a pretty pretty big impact on the Dominican Republic today. I saw some of the videos down there, huge waves crashing and they're um, you know, experiencing tropical storm conditions, but those waves are, are massive down, down there in the uh, Dominican. Yeah, I think we had 38 or 40 foot seas in the Central Caribbean with us today. So we'll move on to talk about the, the forecast track. Um, like you mentioned at the start, there hasn't been a lot of change today. I think there's been a lot of, of uh, hoopla today, if you will, a lot of variations in the model runs. 
especially over here in the Western Gulf of Mexico. But things have not changed a whole lot when you actually start looking at this. Um, you can see the trend here is now more of, of a west northwesterly track here in the Southern Gulf of Mexico. And we'll get into some reasoning on still what we're thinking here in the Southern Gulf. Um, but this is pretty much getting locked in now for south of Jamaica, south of the Caymans, a, a significant impact on Jamaica. And then likely south of Cancun and Cozumel. So between Cancun and Cozumel and maybe the state of Quintana Roo down here to the south of that um, looks pretty uh, likely with this. And this is what I'm talking about when we start talking about the trends today. We, we have seen a little bit of a northern trend or shift in the guidance here in the western Gulf of Mexico. But it's not a great big shift. Um, you can you can see yesterday, 24 hours ago, the guidance was down here, and now it's up around northeast Mexico or extreme southern Texas. Um, the latest here is in the dark blue, so this is the most recent, and it's actually kind of trended a little bit back south again. And so we haven't seen significant increases of potential um, along the Texas coast, especially the upper Texas coast, Louisiana coast. Yes, there has been an increase in the potential for impacts here down in South Texas and Northeast Mexico. And I'm going to switch over. So this is the model consensus. This is the average of all the models. And then if you look at what the actual Hurricane Center forecast track is, we haven't seen much of a change in what they're, they're forecasting at all. You know, they, they have brought it north some, but for the most part, they're lining up pretty good with where they have been. So there, there's not these, I, I think there's a lot of out there, a lot of motion out there that there's this big jump and this is coming to texas but when you actually look at it, it, it it's not that we've trended up the coast a little bit towards northeast mexico yes south texas potentially is going to have some impacts here um and we're talking a little bit about that coming up but you know it's there's no big huge changes here with this today and and i think you kind of led into that um all right let's talk a little bit about the steering so we're going to get it moving west. It's going to weaken likely. Um, there's still some debate in the modeling how much it weakens here in the Western Caribbean, but it looks like it's going to weaken across the Yucatan, get in the Southern Gulf. And this is our big ridge of high pressure that is sitting over us right now. It's hot. And this is going to be breaking down and shifting to the east. And you can see this trough of low pressure here uh, showing up in blue across the Northern Plains. And so as this trough swings across the Great Lakes and Midwest, it's going to erode and push this high pressure ridge back down towards the southeast towards florida and that will open up um, a doorway potentially for barrel to come a little bit more toward the northwest but the questions are where is barrel at how strong is it when it's in the position for that trough to influence it and so this is the gfs and this is for uh, noon on saturday and notice the GFS is quite a bit more um, organized with barrel yep. down here. So this is certainly a, a, a tropical storm, um, you know, maybe even a strong tropical storm. And so this is going to feel this trough and the pull of this trough a little bit more. And so barrel may move more toward the northwest or so on this uh, particular model, the GFS. You can see the ridge of high pressure here is pretty much broken down. Uh, yeah. and is over here over Florida. So this has a pathway here in the GFS. And, and you know, if you've been looking at the GFS guidance, it does bring it up here towards South Texas. Yeah. But if you look at the European, totally different situation here with barrel. This is a much weaker, much smaller, much further south storm that really is not feeling the effects of this trough as much. So it doesn't come up to the Northwest. It kind of moves West or West Northwest. And so what we're going to be facing here in the Western Gulf with this eventually is an intensity forecast is going to really probably determine the track forecast. So a stronger storm, more defined storm is going to want to turn off to the Northwest or even the North Northwest. Weaker storm is going to want to move more to the West um, or West Northwest toward Northeastern Mexico. So that's, that's the, the issue we're going to be facing here in the Gulf of Mexico. You know, today, I think we've seen a little bit of the guidance trend a little bit stronger, not a lot stronger, but a little bit stronger in the Western Gulf of Mexico, maybe finding a little bit more favorable conditions uh, as we get into this weekend. And the other thing to talk about is, is the timing. You know, if you're looking at uh, the forecast coming up towards potentially South Texas, Northeast Mexico, we're talking potentially starting to see impacts as early as late Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the timing here is, is, is relatively quick, getting off the Yucatan and then heading towards 
the uh, Western Gulf fairly quickly. So this is the intensity forecast. Here we are now. And you can see fairly rapid weakening continues to be depicted in, in, in virtually every model here, uh, bringing this down towards, um, you know, a blow a major hurricane um, by this time tomorrow evening. So this would be tomorrow evening. And then just continuing on down, this is the landfall through the Yucatan. And this is it getting back out over the Gulf of Mexico. Again, mid-range tropical storm up to maybe a high-end tropical storm or category one hurricane is on the table here, but you right. still don't see a lot of increase in the model guidance with respect to the intensity uh, as we get out here in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're not seeing any big jumps upward um, or anything like that. And so that continues to be something we've, we've been looking at, something we've noticed that this trend is holding here in the Gulf of Mexico that we're not expecting a lot of, of intensification and potentially rapid intensification. A lot of this is going to have to do with how it how that inner core gets disrupted by the shear and the Yucatan and how long it takes and how favorable it is in the Gulf for it to kind of rebuild that. And um, I've been looking at some of the guidance, say the GFS stuff, and, and, and the cloud pattern looks really lopsided in the Gulf, um, dealing with some shear and dry air. So things just aren't looking overly favorable for this to really blow up in the Gulf of Mexico. So I think we definitely have that on our side. One last thing I did want to point out, um, this is the probability of tropical storm force winds and the arrival time, the most likely arrival time of those tropical storm force winds. And so you can see now South Texas, South Padre Island, Port Isabel, Brownsville, up almost to Kingsville, you are within that area now of at least a five to 10% chance of seeing sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. And the most likely time of that arriving is, is, is Saturday evening. So you do need to be paying attention down here on the Southern Texas coast. If we go back, you are within the cone, you know, even though the center may track well to the South of you, you are within the cone here. And so you could potentially see that center come up in here. Kingsville's here, Corpus Christi a little bit further to the North. Um, even Corpus is in it now. Um, and so if, if, if you're down in this area, you need to be reviewing your, your hurricane plan, making sure your supplies and everything are stocked up. You need to be really paying attention to the forecast. We're going to start getting in now over the next couple of days into the impacts part of this. How much rain, how much wind, how much storm surge potentially uh, we could see down here on the lower Texas coast. Mid and upper Texas coast, it's just continuing to watch this. I wouldn't do a whole lot more than that. I, you know, I, I think up here in the Houston area, we can breathe a little bit. Are we completely out of the woods? No, we're not completely out of the woods. But I, I think, you know, it's we're, we're looking a little bit better up here than, than say, folks are down here on the lower coast and in the valley. And if you're in that area, you definitely need to be paying attention to this. Yeah. And of course, as we've been saying all along, a lot of folks heading to the beach with the 4th of July weekend and with Saturday impacts, you know, just because that cone is there, that doesn't mean that there aren't impacts outside of that cone. And I'm talking about rip currents, uh, storm surge, higher tides, things like that. The beaches can be pretty dangerous, uh, you know, all along the Texas coast. So if you are making plans to be uh, around the water this weekend, I would uh, personally, I wouldn't even get in the water um, you know, and I would definitely pay attention, as you said, what the storm's doing. But just keep in mind, the main point being that there can be effects outside the cone. And like you said, Jeff, when we get closer to it, we'll have a more detail as far as the impacts all along the Texas coast, especially going into a holiday weekend. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Just a reminder to subscribe to our Weather Insights YouTube link, uh, subscribe and share with your family and friends so that they can stay up to date on the latest of what's going on in the tropics and join us for the next Weather Insights podcast.